Tanse, and hello. I'm Todd Lyons, and I thought we'd take a little time today to look at some beginning player resources for people interested in trying the basic fantasy role-playing game, or GMs interested in short, cheap-to-print resources that they can use and share with potential players to get them up and running quickly. I do recommend that you get the full core book. It's printed uh, just at cost, plus, you know, 50 cents. Uh, very economical, although at 200 pages, more or less, it's uh, it's it's got quite a bit of information in there, and maybe you want to just try before you buy, even though it's criminally underpriced. <laughs> so, there are some options that uh, that I'm familiar with that uh, we're going to explore together today, because I, having come from playing the 1981 uh, original game, and then going straight into uh, the full core book, I really haven't had opportunity to play around much with, with beginning resources, but I, I'm familiar with a few, and we could look at them today. So here is the Beginner's Essentials package, which um, at 14 pages, including the title and the uh, credits page, <laughs> is like way less than 10% of the size of, uh, of the core book. Let's have a look here. So we can see that it was started in 2011. That was the initial release from Tom Hoyt, but I'm assuming that we've had other people involved over the years for proofing, including a couple names at the end there that I recognize as fairly recent people to join the, the Basic Fantasy Project um, to get out a fourth edition. So, uh, page one, basically an overview of, of uh, what all the steps are, um, what equipment you need, the steps from one to 12, explanation of what the character abilities are all about, and bonus and penalties for high and low ability scores. And hmm, this suggests this would suggest that we're that we're doing three d six right down the line, which that's certainly one way. That's certainly the old school way of generating abilities. Um, I'm not sure that I would do. I would do it that way, but that's certainly an option. In the very least, I think it's good to allow people to arrange the scores in a way that they would like, so that they can play the sort of character that they would like to play, and they may not understand how what a prime requisite is. So uh, if you're handing this out to your players and they're all brand new, you may have to step them through some of the stuff, but uh, yeah, I believe in you. You can do this. So um, page two is an explanation of character races and also, I guess, an indication of what their bonuses and their special abilities are, which I think is super helpful. Even if you have, you know, not brand new players, but ones that are playing a different race for the first time, or in a long time, I can see this being useful as something that you could uh, print out and then cut into quarters and just hand out as little mini cheat sheet so that they remember what it is that they can do uh, until it sort of becomes ingrained. So super helpful. Very nice. Um, okay, here's an overview of the four classes with some extra information here describing the sneak abilities and the other special skills uh, for the thief. The one thing I always found a little confusing was that there's no detect traps, there's only remove traps, but you basically roll that score twice, once to detect and once to remove. Anyway, nice to have everything fit on one page. Okay, and ooh, okay, we're on to equipment. How many pages of equipment do we have? Two pages of equipment. So I'm aware of some other resources that can even simplify this part. For people that really want to see like, oh, well, what are all the various things that that uh, that I could buy or what should I buy it could be I don't know a little overwhelming if they want to just have something that's that's pay and go there are options for that but if you have the time and uh, there's the interest in doing a shopping trip yeah you could look through these two pages certainly all right day-to-day -day survival yeah um knowing how reality exists in this game as far as eating and sleeping and that kind of stuff. That's very important. Overview of combat, surprise, and movement. Time and movement was something that, uh, as a player, and encumbrance, those three things, are things that took me some time to kind of get used to when I was beginning role-playing. So I'm glad to see that uh, that stuff is being addressed here. Uh, movement in different situations, also very important. And I can see at the... This, lovely little chart here, talks about withdrawal, fighting withdrawal, because it's important to know 
how do I extricate myself from a combat situation where I don't, I don't want them getting a free attack on me. I'm trying just to back away slowly. And uh, there it, it's defined right there. Half normal walking movement. All right. Um, some talk about attack and defense, bonuses and penalties, missile fire, and how concealment basically improves your armor class, makes it less likely that you'll be hit. Uh, oh, and grenade-like missiles uh, for things like throwing oil. <laughs> I've had some very comical experiences trying to throw oil, thinking, well, this will make that problem disappear quickly, only to have it fall back in my face that uh, <laughs> it bounced off a wall. It ends up going behind me, uh, hitting another PC. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Anyway, can be terrible. Uh, missiles that miss. Yeah, been there. Holy water uh, versus undead and subduing damage. Yeah, if you're trying to use the flat of your blade. <laughs> um, whether that exists as a rule, I, I've had some very hard uh, DMs, GMs that that said, you know, if it has a, an edge on it, I'm not going to allow you to try that. But uh, yeah, I think you give someone a good slap with a broadsword. Sure, why not? wounds, healing, death, and dying. So that is something that, especially people coming from modern incarnations of D&D, need to understand the lethality and how slow natural healing occurs in this game. There's no, I'll just have a quick nap and wake up and I'll feel great. Yeah, that's that's not a thing. Clerics are so important in this game. Uh, healing potions, very important in this game. Uh, avoiding getting damaged in the first place. Very important in this game. So, And then the section on spells. And, uh, well, that's <laughs> that's a, a quick way to, to, to uh, solve the problem for clerics because they're brand new. They haven't earned any spells from their deity yet. Um, they get that one line saying, well, too bad. I've seen some variations of the game where they do give the cleric a spell, you know, so that they're not completely starting with nothing. On the other hand, though, they can fight, you know, like fighters with, with armor and weapons and stuff. So they don't have that, to, uh, magic users don't have that advantage. So yeah, I'm on the fence about that. So I'm going to assume that the rest of these are first level spells. Yep. And that's it. So that is beginner's essentials in 10 pages, a nice little overview. And, uh, yeah, with the exception that I think we could, uh, yeah, where people don't know uh, what to choose off that list, you can look at other options. And equipment packs is something that I'm familiar with, where just based on your your class, you can choose, well, do, I'm a fighter. Do I want pack one or pack two? Uh, has what's included and the encumbrance for you to make note of. Um, oh, fighter pack three. So leather armor, long sword, short bow, quiver, 30 arrows. So depending on how they want to, I guess, make their priorities, you know, do I want more things, you know, or do I want heavier armor? Do I want a more expensive armor, a less expensive weapon? Okay. So, oh, and there's the basic pack on top. So everyone can start out with a basic pack and you get some gold sort of thrown in too. Not as much as you would if you were generating the gold and purchasing everything manually. But uh, you can start out with your backpack, torches, tinderbox, etc., and D6 plus times 10 gold pieces. Um, choose a pack based on your preference and your class for fighter, magic user, cleric, or thief. And if you've wanted to spend any of that money that you get as part of the basic pack, there's bonus packs one and two that, that have some extra things. And I can see, looking at the bonus pack two, is the 10-foot wooden pole which until you've fallen into a pit trap, <laughs> you may not understand the beautiful utility of the 10 foot wooden pole. And uh, it has a proud long history in old school play and iron spikes, which what would you need an iron spike for? Well, two scenarios. One, you're inside a room that you're trying to prevent monsters from coming into while you bind wounds or rest or uh, just take a break for a while. Or two, uh, the monsters are in the room and you would like to spike the door shut from the other side to keep them in. Super, super useful. And uh, if I recall, this is just a one pager here. Yep. One page. The other page is the, is the open game license. So I, I find that a very helpful uh, resource. And in the middle between, uh, I guess, using uh, either the full-blown core or using the... Uh, Beginner's Essentials package with or without the equipment. Equipment, uh, 
PAX supplement. There is a quick character generation supplement, which can be very useful. And I have perused this in, in the past before. You have the option of either just rolling the abilities any way that you want to, um, or you can roll a d20 and then choose one of these sets of scores to, to copy onto your character sheet. And other than there being some variability, high or low scores, the total number, if you add in a straight line, like straight across the, the whole row, it's, it's the same number all added together. It's just slightly varying like where the high and low scores are. So there'll be no weak characters or no strong characters. These are all completely balanced uh, array of scores. So this is interesting, and uh, it's not really covered anywhere else. So if you want to have this sort of level of, of uh, background for a character, there are some charts here you can roll on to determine your birth order, parental occupation, um, craft, and other parts of background, you know, or, or, or previous uh, life before coming into adventuring, you know, merchants and nobility, uh, significance of events from childhood and guardians and relatives. So all things that could add some flavor to your portrayal of who you are, um, more significant events, crimes. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe you're on the run off a lot of, uh, of, wow, off a lot of work here going into that. Um, so there are options also here for equipment, um, where you can just randomly generate, um, by rolling on each chart and that's it. So anyway, those are three options, three simple, um, tools that you could use without having the core book involved, without needing to purchase or, or download and print it to get you gaming or to get brand new people that you're trying to entice into the world of basic fantasy role-playing game. You can send them home with, with these printouts. So I hope this has been helpful. I've certainly enjoyed it.